Are you ready for a change? I am talking, talking, talking to you. Then get ready to explore the quantum possibilities. It's time to transform that outdated paradigm into something universal and new. Time to uncover the truth hidden beneath the veil of lies. A time to think outside the box as we link to a higher consciousness. Welcome to the Awakening. 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 And now the hosts of Broadcast Team Alpha. Broadcast Team Alpha. Nori Love and Augie Nost. Well, hello, magnificent Merkaba moonbeams. How are you? It's Tuesday night again, and I'm always so grateful to be here. And I know I can speak for Augie. He's grateful to be here, too, because we we love hanging out with you on Tuesday night. And we have a super special guest tonight, um, a returning guest, because why? Because everybody loves her. We love her. We can hardly wait to get to her. But first, I just wanted to thank you from every aspect of my heart, not just the bottom, for all of the love and all of your generosity. And Florida Chick, again, thank you so much for your generosity. It really touches us. And it's very helpful. You know, your generosity is helpful to us too during these crazy times that are still going on. And you know where to reach us, broadcastteamalpha.com and uh, just a quickie on the mastermind connection, the mastermind connection at gmail.com. We can tell tell you about the mastermind sessions that happen on Sunday. They are growing in leaps and bounds. And we have some of the most just beautiful, um, um, thoughtful, uh, genuine people that are coming together and joining our intentions for for benevolent reasons, for benevolent intentions. And if you would like to be a part of that, we would love for you to be there. So for information, just send us an email to the mastermind connection at gmail.com and we'll give you the scoop. So Augie, let's talk about our guest. <laughs> yes, yes. And I'm glad you didn't let the cat out of the bag who it was yet because I, I enjoy doing that. <laughs> we have Laura Eisenhower returning to broadcast Team Alpha. And I think just about everybody knows her. Maybe there's just two or three people out there that don't know who she is of the thousands that's going to hear this show. So I'm going to say something about her for the benefit of those two, three folks. She is a global alchemist a cosmic mythologist, an intuitive ad- astrologist, and an international sought-after speaker. Laura is the great-granddaughter of President Dwight D. Eisenhower, and she is a leading researcher on health, exopolitics, alchemy, metaphysics, and galactic history. Now, Laura works just about short of 24 hours a day trying to free us from the 3D holographic time loop that we have been caught in and uh, was orchestrated by the false information, archonic information, I guess, so that's placed us in this lockdown, stupid situation we are in right now. And besides that, Laura, welcome to the show. Welcome, Laura. Oh, hey. Oh, it's so great to be here. Thank you for having me. Always. It's such a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Wow. So you're busy. You're like all over the planet these days. <laughs> Well, not traveling as much as I used to. And no? wow. not getting along very well with the airlines. Mm. And, yep. But, yeah, I mean, a lot of stuff uh, we're able to do online, which is great. I know. Thank goodness for that. I, and I noticed something today because there's a whole new section on social media where you can scroll for all of the classes now that people are offering, I mean, you know, how to bake an apple pie, you know, I mean, how to paint the baby's room. I mean, there is a class for pretty much everything or anything you want to know now that we, um, you know, have had this experience with the lockdown. So it's very interesting, but I'm so happy to have you here with us. There's, what do you, where do you want to start? There's so much going on. What are you feeling like? Oh, gosh. Uh, Yeah, what about, 
how do we navigate through all the information that we're getting that we probably should think that at least half of it is lies or falsehoods, but we don't know which half it is. Well, how do you deal with that? Well, I think it's uh, a part of this greater growth period as a humanity to get our mental power back and just learn to think for ourselves, learn to trust ourselves, fall back on ourselves, connect more with nature. Um, I feel like when we externalize things to the degree that humans have done, um, it, it's not really getting us anywhere. Uh, people get locked into the matrix programs, the steered narratives, the things that are coming through the news, even in what might seem to be a more kind of awaken, more conscious type platforms. Um, I think those, you know, are good places to go, but at the same time, there's disinfo. So there are a lot of really, really great sources of uh, information coming from people that really do support us learning to think for ourselves and become free thinkers again. And when we look at like extraterrestrial races or where we might, you know, be assisted and uh, where there might be, you know, some form of intervention, they're not going to save us. They want to encourage our awakening process. And, and, and so I think that's the most important thing. Um, we have to develop intuition. We have to just, you know, realize that running into this constant patterning of feeling betrayed or let down or, you know, the dates or predictions that are given, you know, don't really amount to much that, that we need to be the co-creators. We need to understand who we truly are, what we're made of, what has been sort of robbed and stolen or manipulated and, and, and call that energy back. Um, and this is, you know, thousands of years of history, you know, where uh, I feel we've misunderstood this human experience. We, we, we think that this is the human condition. We need to understand the level of mind control, dark technologies, and all the inversions and reversals that have been used um, to, you know, kind of keep us in this lower state. Put, you know, puts us in fight or flight or, you know, adopting belief systems that infect our creative energy with, you know, things that we don't want to create. And uh, I know you guys are like very pioneering and very expressive about, you know, the power of the mind. And, and I would say to me, that is the most important thing. And that is a lesson for all of us. What can we do to get that power back so that our mental body can be used in, in the way that it was designed for, to connect with our creative imagination, to be able to uh, be inventive enough and connected enough with you know our higher mind to uh, create a better storyline than what we're being given, and and stand for truth and stand up for yourself, you know, and and watch out for fear and anxiety and all the different things that inf uh, you know not only infect our creative channels but our you know our lower mind. Yeah. And uh, so integration of polarity, bringing our higher awareness and wisdom, nature into the physical plane, so that we can make changes that support our greater selves uh, to me is the best way to navigate. And if we do have to compromise in order to keep a job or go into a grocery store that we know that we're inwardly free and uh, there's certain things that they can't have and we need to illuminate those things um, and just boldly face uh, this more overt dark agenda that mm -hmm. has been covert. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. It's like we we've been manipulated for, thousands of years now it's more obvious so it's 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 stimulating a great awakening but it's also pulling a lot of people more into um the fear-based you know kind of reaction and and i really feel like you know the the wheat from the chaff or you know kind of a bifurcation in consciousness is happening right now is not necessarily going to appear to us in the physical plane just yet um it, 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 it but it will more and more uh as long as we have boundaries and as long as we divert our attention away from it to build uh, our dreams and visions at, uh, by, by staying consistently aligned with those, those greater goals and inspirations that come through. And, and if we stay aligned with that, to me, that is what tackles it. It's like, you know, building the immune system, you, you give it good things, you support it uh, instead of continually um, undermining it. Uh, and the medical industry is, you know, very good at sort of disempowering us on that level. <laughs> so we're in the matrix through our, our refusal to to stay in this 
very toxic relationship. To me, it's that we're getting a divorce from the old paradigm and the deep state. Do you think um, a lot of the mind control, so, you know, back in the day when it was maybe more targeted at individuals, now that it's so widespread, you know, I mean, completely, you know, across the social media platforms, across TV, um, is there less targeting of individuals because now it's like a mass blanketing of it? Yeah, that's very interesting that you say that. And and, and it is, I mean, there's always been sort of an indoctrination, you know, kind of magazines, television, and how the school systems have sort of, you know, changed, uh, you know, Project Mockingbird, Project Paperclip, you know, has, has been attempting to groom individuals to fall right into the trap. It's like, it's like been preparatory. Now it's like in our faces, it's like, okay, it's a little bit more easy to see what's going on. And, you know, both sides, right or left, you know, have, have, have their corruption, but it's like, who stands for freedom? That's what, you know, really counts right now. So I would say, you know, maybe it's not so much about the individual target of a person, um, even though that, you know, still exists to a certain degree, these projects, MK Ultra programs still exist. But, you know, it is um, widespread. But again, it's always been there. And now it's just sort of like the harvest. You know, mm-hmm. this, this, is, this is, you know, their, their stage of the agenda that's been in the works for a long time. Because the showdown of forces is between, you know, us upgrading our DNA and waking up and um, this other thing where because that's a, such a huge threat to them that uh, we're, we're dealing with this next level of, you know, control being masked, being jabbed with, you know, the shot, uh, having our survival put on the line where some people just don't even feel like they have a choice and, and they don't even get the whole awakening part of it because they're just trying to put food on the table and they're, yeah. you know, assuming that, yeah, maybe they, they, they do have our best interests at heart. But it's getting so obvious that even, you know, it's like, it's, it's not difficult to see. It's like, wow, we're all struggling. And, and, and there's a priority on banning Dr. Seuss and, and saying the muppets are racist. It's like, it's like, it's getting so stupid. And it's like, no, you're, let's put three masks on. That's why I got kicked off a uh, lot of I'm like, you're trying to suffocate us. And then I told everybody what I thought. And I gave them peace of my mind about the new world order. It's like, come on, people, this is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here, here, just good. just wear this plastic bag over your head. That'll work. <laughs> you know? Yeah, my God. It, it, it's, yeah. It's, and it's all about separating us from nature, because really, you know, this planetary body is encoded with, you know, ascension energies. You know, so yeah. that we can yeah. advance ourselves, we can recover and rehabilitate from so many thousands of years of very, very dark history. And uh, so the awakening is to me way stronger than those that are complying to, you know, this kind of great reset or new world order agenda. And the numbers are on our side, I feel. And, and, and the numbers make the collective consciousness that much stronger. Um, I mean, we are replicas of, you know, the planetary grid network, this planetary body, the multidimensional reality Um, and source energy and that's not going to enslave us so we have to make sure our minds don't continue to be you know captured and used to our detriment because literally they're using the tool of the mind to screw ourselves over and and we're Mm. a part of it if we if we don't check ourselves you know what i mean yes yeah you you have written extensively on the planetary grid could you talk a little bit about that because that is in a lot of people may not understand the term what it really means but let's hear about that yeah well the planetary grid network um when we drop down into this lower density uh the planetary grid network got messed with just like our dna the, the true organic planetary grid network connects with our full 12 strand and beyond DNA capacity. Uh, the magnetic and electrical energies and the masculine and feminine make up the planetary grid network. So, so it basically kind of acts as uh, a circulatory system that helps us to maintain connection with our divine blueprint. So different galactic wars that step down into the physical plane 
uh, the Anunnaki, you know, showing up and the negative factions of that and some uh, more masterful, you know, kind of forces that decided that they weren't going to really like participate in the human experiment, uh, experiment in a way that looks out for us, um, you know, set up and established this inverted matrix system that literally not only unplugged certain parts of the planetary grid network, but it, it programmed things into it to generate artificial timelines, but it's based in harvesting and siphoning our life force, our Kundalini, you know, when we see child trafficking and, and human trafficking rings and the different MK ultra projects, it's all to you know create a battery system for these artificial timelines. And so the inversions and the manipulation with dark technologies, yes, impacts the planetary grid network, but where it really captures people is through the fake media and all these different distortions of the masculine and feminine um, and not really supporting authenticity. And that's why the race wars now or you know transgender, which is transhumanism kind of like connected, you know, it's, it's like there's nothing wrong with however anybody wants to identify with themselves or love one another. That's not the issue. But when it's indoctrinated, when it's a part of a greater programming and when it's like really geared towards wiping our true history, we, we, we can't really learn and grow. It's like if we're healing from a traumatic past in this particular incarnation as humans and, and somebody wiped all our memories uh, and we, we we didn't have something to kind of reflect upon in order to grow and heal. Um, we're not really living uh, an accurate and honest lifestyle. And uh, so they're trying to infect future generations. They're trying to slowly morph the society as we know it that wasn't healthy to begin with into, you know, even more confusion when the Great Awakening really, uh, to me, is an individual experience. And what it means to be sovereign and authentic and connected to truth. And, and that is what the natural planetary grid network holds. Um, and yes, you know, we look at the multidimensional cosmos and if we're going to upgrade our DNA and move into these higher harmonic universes, yes, we have to face some of these battles and wars. But the thing is we have to face it um, and not, you know, have some diversion or distraction uh, take us away from what is required. So, you know, some people are afraid of the dark night of the soul. They'd rather go on pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. You know, that's an example when we need to just kind of like go into that difficult and dark place to really look at, you know, am I running ancestral patterns? Am I running, mm -hmm. you know, a programming connected to, you know, whatever TV show or movies um, one was exposed to or whatever the school system told you to think. Um, so, so the rebels, the people that have been kind of like rebellious from day one are having a much easier time, even though it's very disappointing to see the fact that the world is in the state that it's in. But, but I realized like, man, you know, I kind of appreciate the fact that I did really bad in school and I had the worst attendance in my high school because I just went to the library. I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm not just like spacing out here. I want a real education. I, I really want to know the hidden truths. And, and they're, they're slowly trying to rip us away from that, even more so than they already have. Because yeah. we don't talk about our galactic history in classrooms. We don't talk about ways to become a Christed being or, you know, experience soul alchemy. I mean, or, or, or learn how to grow food. It's just um, so, so I really feel uh, people are beginning to recognize that we need to protect and preserve all that is sacred um, because it, it's now becoming incredibly detrimental it makes no sense to suffocate a child whose brain is developing, you know, just even going into town. I, I'm not, I, I barely go into town because they're like, you know, Laura's, she's got anger issues. She's like, <laughs> uh, it's like seeing a bunch of mass kids, you know, in, yeah. in the yard. It's just like, are you, come on. So, so my hope is that we'll pull together more yes. resources and help people transition out of those kind of matrix uh, position so that we 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 don't have to you know compromise ourselves because a lot of people don't agree they just don't feel like they have a choice and if they know that there's a resource of people um, that recognize this and want to help you know yeah. provide a, 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 an exit route and and still create abundance uh, that that that's to me where it's at so these threats breathing down our neck um, offers us the chance to not take life for granted and our freedoms for granted, but mm -hmm. we stand up and hold ourselves accountable to 
um, not compromising um, beyond a detrimental like like place to the point where you, I'm going to get the jabs just so I can keep my job. It's like, no, that's not acceptable. No. Yeah. You mentioned that uh, we are going through a DNA upgrade. Do you feel that is a natural thing or maybe induced by something from the outside? What do you think? I think it's both. You know, every time there's like a breakthrough or a revelation, it changes a person's life. It helps them to get rid of toxic relationships, helps them to move away from jobs that might not really support who they are as a spiritual being. So, you know, an upgrade, you know, to me is like an epiphany. It's like, oh, you know, those aha moments, you know, getting that download, but then doing something with it, not just being like, okay, well, I just had this like great insight, but I'm still going to show up to this toxic relationship or suffer over the way my family might treat me. You know, and I'm, that's just quoting like, you know, whoever out there. And and it's just, it, it's it's saying, you know, if, if, if this insight is coming in, if this greater truth is coming in, that the next step to really upgrade is to fully invite it into one's, you know, physical life and, and defend it and stand up for it and stay consistent with it and not let these different tactics undermine or ungrounded or, you know, sever a person from that, you know, direct connect. So, you know, people are inspired all the time. They've got dreams and visions. People have callings and missions, but who has the courage to actually live it to the full? Yeah. And that is where the upgrade is needed. Nature. I mean, we're in an Ascension window period and this is a prophesized window period. Yes. And it's been very distorted as being like the end of the world and it's all Armageddon and this and that. And we're even living out things that are in movies, you know, connected to like Vendetta, you know, V for Vendetta, that a virus was used to control humanity. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we've seen what that looks like, you know, in Hunger Games and other things. And, and it's just like, how can we protect ourselves from participating in that on mm-hmm. any level, including unconscious levels? And, and, and drop the fear of death because it's like worst case scenario, we have to fight for our freedom and it might kill us. And guess what? It's not scary to die. It's actually really right. freaking awesome. Right, <laughs> right. I encourage people to want to die, but it's like, what are people scared of? Have a life review before you're facing, you know, death's door, you know, process right. your life, you know, make peace with uh, people in your past, clear karma, um, live a healthy lifestyle. I mean, Yes. I've seen enough life reviews just, you know, when there's turbulence on a plane, I'm like, oh, here it comes. It's like <laughs> we're doing every aspect of my life. And I just yeah. do that pretty much every day. Yeah. Um, but it's like, what what is there to fear? And it's like, is there really a fear of God? If we fear God and we fear death, then we're literally allowing satanic energies to suck on, suck on us and suck us dry and, and, and take away our ability to truly live. Because it's not a freaking true life for teenagers for children for adults to be double mass triple mass or shot up with something when the abundance of herbs and supplements that are available uh can help us to grow in these times this is a time for growth and transformation and it's being hijacked and so people need to just say wow i'm done with that exactly exactly that's so good so good Oh, and we're, we're coming right back on the other. Woo-hoo, we are back, and I am so excited to be talking with Augie and the, the amazing Laura Eisenhower. But before we get started, I haven't I haven't done shouties in like two or three weeks. So really quick, we have the amazing, beautiful, rich, and famous Tina Marie here. A dollar's worth. Hi, dollar. Anne is here. CK Peace is here. Hi, Dana. Doc who? Backslash, backslash is here. Echo, hi, Echo. Five is here. Gail, Gail is here. Happy Daffy, what a great name. JC is here. Joe Marco, hi, Karen. Hi, Kay. Hi, Linda. Lisa, Naj is here. Parked Cake is here. Rob, Rob, hi, Rob. Rockstar58 is here. Shady D. Wave Rider is here. And Z is here. Now, that was one side of the chat room. I'm just going to go through real quick to see if there's anybody um, that's talking in the chat that somehow isn't listed in there. I think I got you all. If I didn't, please forgive me. So, um, 
Laura, I just wanted to talk about uh, what we were, I don't know exactly what we were talking about before, but a lot of the gist of what we were talking about is, you know, coming back into ourselves, being our own damn guru, right? There is no magic pill. You know, we, we are the personal answer. Um, a lot of what I'm doing at the Center for Radiant Wellbeing, you know, it looks like it's a place to go do exercise, but it's so much more than that. You know, we're, we're smoothing our energy before class in the morning. People are, you know, working on their own energetic centers. We're doing brain yoga. And during the classes, when we're doing really like a difficult move, you know, and we have to breathe through it, I will say, okay, imagine that you're not doing, you know, this leg move right now, that you're in a situation that would normally scare you. The way that you exhale to relieve the tension in this move is the exhale I want you to use when that happens to you. So I'm just trying to take very mundane and normal things that we do with our body to train ourselves to not be afraid of false flags, to not be jolted by media. You know what I mean? Just so we can begin to have some normalcy within ourself until, you know, it returns to the outside. Yep. And our, our own personal lives, I feel, you know, kind of show us a similar example, you know, if you're in an unhealthy relationship or you have friends that uh, aren't quite on your wavelength, I mean, are you going to drop your frequency and, and go along with um, what they're doing? Or are you going to be like, I need to cut you out of my life and I need to move on? You know, the media has a, a great way of spinning disinformation and it targets humanity and it's a mass mind control operation. And it's a directed psychological and emotional operation used against us. Yes, um, yes. And it's, it's sort of like this grooming process over the course of a really long time has uh, ended up being very successful in the way it divides and conquers us. Um, <laughs> our true nature uh, is, is all about love. And then it's like, okay, well, there's this invading species, but well, let's not separate ourselves too much from it because it's also how we're healing from the negative ego construct that it pulls us into. So when we can not be victimized by it, not be played by it and not be mind controlled by it. Uh, yeah, we're going to experience, you know, really awesome things. So those awakened souls that are here, those that have starseed missions that might be panicking, like, Oh my God, did we just like fall off like the good timeline? And <laughs> screwed right. it's like, no i mean we, we there was there was bound to be a showdown of forces because you know they they they've had agendas for a long time it's just been so cleverly hidden and now we're looking at it face to face and we can actually do something about it thank goodness we can do something about it like i i will be happy when we could have like a big wave of a lot of people doing something about it. I don't know what that would look like, but I choose to keep, you know, seeing that vision, you know? No, and that's I, the, the, such an important thing. And sometimes it feels like, you know, an impossible mission or endeavor, but uh, nope, nope, nope. And guess what? Huh. I say to people, mother earth, the consciousness of this planetary body is the greatest power and force that we are a part of in the most intimate and incredible way through our DNA chakra system, uh, even our organs and endocrine system, nervous system, you know, energetic system, everything, mental, emotional, physical, spiritual bodies. Uh, and it's like, it's like we need to break the relationship with the thing that, steals from us and robs us. That's why, you know, I compare it to a personal relationship, you know, with a narcissist or an abuse. Yes. Like divorce mm. that a hole. Yeah. Not to say that. Yeah. Just yep. divorce it. Divorce it. Because guess what? True love awaits. And what true love is is not just, you know, between people. It's it's between us and creation. You know, are we gonna have a true love experience with creation or some like 
dumbed down, twisted, inverted version uh, where it just makes us miserable. We don't have to have that. And it seems like it. It's like, oh, I got to pay bills and do this and that or, you know. But it's like, you're not going to take our guns. You try and take our guns. Yeah. I'm Swiss Family Robinson, my house. You're not even going to be able to get you know, the drive. So, you know, you just, you also have to be prepared. That's and right. uh, the thing is, we have good intent. You don't know how, like, humans, good natured humans, don't know how to think like a villain. So we're learning, you know, how to think enough like a villain to be able to um, defend ourselves. I mean, so, you know, there's always that metaphor about, you know, chess pieces and chessboard. Um, and yeah, so, so we got to look at it as a, an opportunity to strengthen our minds and to get smarter and wiser. That's why I like to use the term like spiritual athlete. We I just love that. Against the barrier and just be like, oh, it's too much for me. No, we, <laughs> we, we learn to fly and jump over the obstacles and these obstacles uh, we, we need to kind of like bless in a certain way. It doesn't mean it's acceptable, but we need to, you know, appreciate what, what it can pull out of us instead of what it's trying to destroy. When we focus on what it's trying to destroy, we become very, very weakened and dependent. Um, and anyway, I just, mm-hmm. what's unfortunate is people look at the star seeds or, you know, those that have gone down the rabbit holes there's a lot of negative terminology. Like, I don't even think conspiracy theorist sounds that bad, but it's sort of like, oh, that's what we, you know, people um, easily turn the other way. They don't realize, you know, you're basically the lifeboat pulling them out of, you know, an, an ocean filled with sharks and you're trying to just like get them. Right. Like, really? Like, you know, right. all kind of, and then that's what Co Intel Pro and, 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 and that's the real disinformation campaign, making, you know, the good guys look bad. Making the good guys look bad. Oh, yeah. That's totally happening. Yeah. <laughs> that's totally happening. I, I got to sneak a suspicion that we're going to see some major changes this month. Because, uh, Nori, you mentioned that you were, hoping, you know, we're looking for a wave of people doing something. I think I can almost see that wave because there are thousands of people waking up and there's a global coalition of 100,000 doctors that is now coming out saying that we are being lied to about this so-called pandemic. And there is really something happening out there. And uh, boy, oh boy, I'm looking. I want to see next chapter. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, and that's totally there. Um, I, I, I can't remember the name of it. You guys might remember that something uh, freedom movement. I don't know, like all these experts and doctors that have formed an alliance, and then the tribunal judges have formed an. Al- I mean, it's just like it's common sense at this point. To and and people that really are in their positions as doctors, um, experts in the field of medicine. Yes. that are in it for the right reasons, they're not going to submit to this. And yeah, so that's, that's growing. And, you know, it's, it, it's going to help to divert people uh, away from the Fauci's and the gates. Yeah. You know? yeah. And be like, and this is what I say to people. I mean, one of the greatest points I think any of us can make is, all right. Some people support censorship. They're like, even my ex, he's like, oh, it's good you're censored because you just talk this and talk that. I'm like, you're, you're really twisted. So <laughs> I'm blocking you forever. Um, but but it's like, this isn't about politics. This isn't about right or left. There are legitimate doctors and experts that are yes. deplatformed and silenced. And, and, and how is that okay? So I uh, recently interviewed Dr. Zelenko, uh, who had, you know, the protocol to heal from this virus, wow. the, the healing protocol, he got banned. Uh, he was Rudy Giuliani's doctor. Mm. The, and yeah, I mean, he's completely banned. He's not, and, and the hatred of Trump, it's like, and it's fine, don't like the guy. But to literally create a culture. Yeah. That, that yeah, anyway, you know, I could just 
Yeah, no, I'm I'm with you. But you, you know what? I have to say, it really puzzles me. And I thought I understood, please forgive me for using this word. It's a nursing term. I thought I understood all degrees of stupid, right? Because, you know, we would talk about that person who said, you know, here, hold my beer, you know, and the next person he saw was me in the emergency room. So, but I don't understand what people are listening to, to like announce with glee and joy. I got my vaccination today. I'm like, what, what are you, what are you, what are you living in? Who are you talking to? You know, I can't even fathom what I, their, their world is like. I, I know. I, and when friends and family do it, and it's just like, you know, I, I have a loving relationship with a lot of, you know, friends and family that don't think the same. I'm, I don't try and push anything, but I try and, you know, share resources. And it's just like, oh, everything's cool because I got the job. It's like, where have you been? You're like, why haven't you researched this? And and you know how they say it's darkest before the dawn? Yeah. It's like, it, is it stupider before it gets smart? Like, what is wrong with people? <laughs> It just gets stupider and stupider, and then boom! All of a sudden, people are just gonna get a clue. I mean, the yeah. people that like, and I feel for them because they're so well intentioned and some. Yes. It freaking breaks my heart, but yeah. trying to not let it absolutely, you know. Right. Another thing, I, I think a lot of us get empathic overload, or yes, you know, friends and family yeah. to the point where it makes us stuck. It's like yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't worry about my friends and family. I'd probably be levitating. No, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be traveling on a white beam of light. <laughs> yeah, it's like completely. Yeah. It's like, it's so heavy. And it, it's like you're crying for people that don't know how to cry. It's like, yes. all right, this is just getting ridiculous. So then I was like calling in the mothership. And yesterday, all these cloud chips uh, were in the sky and then I'm like, oh, no, 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 you don't have to come pick me up. I, I, I'm i still on board with this mission. I'll stay on Earth. But I swear, I'm like, I'm like, I commissioned a mothership. And I'm like, and I was demanding. And I'm like, you better come and pick me up. I, this is getting so dumb. That's why I don't I did, did My kids and husband, like, do the shopping. Because it's it's not, I, I'm, I, 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 I don't know how to, you know, kind of handle it. And it's like, okay, we can wear like t-shirts, have bumper stickers and, you know, but for the most part, there's a lot of uh, people in agreement. So when I uh, was banned from the Alaska airlines, most people around me agreed with my anger mm-hmm. and uh, they just, they just, they're just going to go along with it. And it's like, so what? And we're going to just create a big revolution. We're just going to, you know, rip all our, ma- I mean, what do you guys think? I mean, do you, what, what do you see? Like, when is this madness going to end? Right. I know. Well, I have a question. What happened when you were banned from the airlines? I mean, how did that work for you? What happened? Um, Too long. No, nah, I just, it's just like, you know, the mask that I had isn't good enough. And it's just sort of like, the attitude of the people working for the airline were just like so, like, pro- like programmed to mm-hmm. like uphold mm. really really dark agenda. And then anytime I see a child mask, I mean that's like mm. I, I just I, I just I can't hold back. Yeah. And uh, yeah. and then I was walking around the airport yelling. <laughs> President Eisenhower warned us about the military industrial complex. And guess what? No, it was okay, good. I wasn't yelling. I, I was laughing. <laughs> no, I, I I felt like I was very respectful. But I was just yeah, like it was an overzealous fucking young punk. And then okay, mm-hmm. doesn't matter. But mm-hmm. so they escorted me out and it ended on a good note and they refunded the trip. Oh. They're just like, you know, you're just basically like you're you're scary and you're threatening. Mm-hmm. Um, our ability to uphold this BS agenda. Yeah. I was like being abusive. I was a little loud. Sure. Uh, but, it, but, but basically it was like, we need to maintain this narrative and you're making it real hard. And right. that's like the crux of it. That's right. 
Well, yeah. that's good. There should be more people doing that. In fact, uh, a couple of days ago, I got into a discussion with a guy, and he told me this virus that is going around, he said, it's wonderful. It's, it's oh. fantastic, he said, because it cured <clears throat> it cured a cold, it cured diabetes, it cured uh, many kinds of cancers and all kinds of other diseases, and cured even uh, car accidents, because nobody's dying from that anymore. It's mm-hmm. all COVID now. Mm-hmm. Right. It's like, and it's like, even when I just have like the mildest of sniffles, it's like, there's no ability to just be normal. It's like, oh, that nah, must be COVID. And then nobody's ever going to jab something up my nose, <laughs> blood brain barrier to check if I have COVID. And anybody who even attempts to anal swab me is going to, oh yeah. Is going <laughs> to yeah. like, yeah. Wish That's they not going to go good. Right. Oh, yeah. And I'm not a violent person, but it's just like... I am. <laughs> yeah, I know, a- anal swabs could definitely trigger violence. <laughs> it's yeah. just like, get <laughs> your creepy freaking hands away from me. And I'm sorry. I, I, I'm not... I refuse to be a victim. Absolutely. I will defend myself. And I will punch you out. Yeah. And uh, I might pull out a whatever. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's just, it's, the thing is, it's like, and this is like a theme in my life time and time again. And now, like you said, it's like, you know, on a larger scale, I've definitely been targeted a lot in my life, had a lot of plants put in my path. And I just, I don't submit to abuse control or any of that, even mm-hmm. if it might cost me my life. Mm-hmm. I would rather die than be enslaved by anyone. No, I get it. I'm with you. I get it. I'm with you. Wow. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's the thing, see, that uh, the government or uh, other entities that like to control people, they don't know what to do with people like you and me, those people that is not afraid to die. Right. They don't really know how to deal with them. Right, and it's not like they can blame it on like, oh, because you're Republican or Democrat. I mean, th- th- there's it's we're labelless, you know, when it comes yeah. to politics. It's like we're sovereign beings. And it's just like... Yeah. They, how can you justify uh, handling somebody who is free mentally? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I like, I, you know, it's like, all right, I'm up for the challenge. I was really glad, though, to see the cloud chips because I'm like, you know, I'm like, all right, can you pick me up and take Let's me? Let's go. Let's and go. All of a sudden, like, it's like all these ships showed up. And uh, I'm not like a major contactee. I don't have like incredible stories. I mean, I have some cool stories, but, but, but yeah, I mean, I realized that, you know, I wasn't just being like, I want out. I really meant it. And then I really <laughs> felt like they had showed up and then no, it re-encouraged me to just, you know, build that spiritual muscle a little mm-hmm. bit more and wake up and, and just, just be in gratitude. You know, I just, I just focus on gratitude. I focus on gratitude. Um, and I take uh, a lot of really good supplements and herbs, mm-hmm. trying to you know stay as balanced as I can. But yeah, that's kind of how I navigate it. When I really feel like I'm kind of going into a downward spiral, yeah. I'm like, you know, what if this was taken away? You know, and I remember uh, there's a wise man book series uh, that I grew up with, and I remember um, real quick. I'll just make a short story short hopefully shorter than the book, but, but I grew up with, you know, this, you know, series of books about wise people. And, and so this, this, this man is like losing his mind because the rain dropped, like there's a leak in the house and it just just drove him nuts. So he goes to the wise man and the wise man says, well, bring over a cow, bring over. And then next day, bring over a chicken, bring over all these things that are just going to make it way more worse. And then slowly remove them to the point where you're like, oh, thank God, it's the raindrop. Because, you know, the cow's mooing, the chicken's, you know, pissing on the bed. I don't know (laughs) how it really went. But and then one of the other books was about sharing a muffin between like all these sisters, like having no. And I just those kind of, you know, things stuck with me where I I, I, uh, just to go back to that question. Yeah. That's kind of how I navigate when I realize I'm kind of going into like a place of anger and rage. Yes. I just, I, I, I'm just so grateful for the roof over my head and, and the friends in my life and people like you. And, uh, and, and I just, 
I just, I'm like, I redirect my brain. And that's the thing in the power of the mind, that's which it. is all for experts in. That's it. Well, yeah, I mean, Abraham Hicks says 17 seconds. So if you want to have a rant, you know, if you want to curse your face off about what's going on, make sure you only do it for 17 seconds, because that's when you, allegedly, you know, you start to draw a uh, law of attraction to you. But you know what? It's really not a bad rule of thumb to live by because, you know, how many times have we gotten ourselves spun up by going into negativity and complaining and complaining and complaining, and then we lose three days trying to come out of it, you know? So, so I agree, you know, gratitude and looking at the things that you love and, you know, finding finding beauty in that next breath of fresh air that goes way, way deep into your lungs. You know, I think really, without yeah. a mask and, and we can create those spaces for ourselves. It's not going to get so bad where I mean, they want to surveillance us. They want to monitor everything we do. It's not going to get that bad. I really, truly don't feel like they're going to succeed in it. But yeah, I mean. And it's, it's, it's the little things, the little things are the most beautiful. I mean, it's like, I might have a complex presentation, but I always try and include a slide that says, it's actually like really simple, but the only reason I'm sharing all this is because there's a lost science Yes. that uh, is not helping us to upgrade our DNA. Science teaches us that our, we got, you know, junk DNA and it's nothing and that's BS. Um, but yeah, it's like, you know, what, what really, you know, helps me is just looking out the window and being like, oh my gosh, an osprey, mm. why is kind of disturbing. I mean, nature is really, really awesome, but it's like, oh, it's eating a carcass of a other animal. <laughs> so nature is pretty brutal. Yes. I realize that and we're a part of that. But to me, it's, it's like, like alchemy, like, yes. like it's mortal in a way there's death and there's life. It's like perennial flowers, but they come back. It's like death is not an end. It, okay. it, it opens gateways and doorways. That's hey, I see you, Laura. We only have a minute and a half left of the show. Let people know where they can get a hold of you, and you yes. get a newsletter and things so they can connect. Awesome. And, and uh, do we want to share about our event? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, Augie, Nori, and I are creating an event uh we will obviously you know share more i'm going to do round tables and an interview with nori i've interviewed augie recently and uh we have uh john d'souza former fbi agent confirmed as a guest and brad olson who just came out with a new book about escaping prison planet and uh very well researched person and uh april 29th to 30th my website where uh, i'll update that kind of information is cosmicgaia.org I've got my own Cosmic Guy subscription thing. I do four Zoom events a month and, you know, check-ins to help people navigate things through, you know, astrology and then Patreon with David Rodriguez, uh, Dark to Light. Awesome. Okay. Thank you so Thanks. much, Laura. See you soon.